migrations and globalization, and the factor of mobility where racial ethnic belonging becomes dislodged from place. This is enunciated first in these subjects' arrival in California with the intention of creating new lives and subjectivity, second in the artist's fashioning of increasingly abstract and dematerialized creative structures that nevertheless want to continue to articulate racial knowledge, and third in the expansion of racial meaning through global aesthetics of African and then Asian forms. But while Asian aesthetics signify the global, in California, they are very much local as well. By 1980, a number of artists like Hammonds, who had made Los Angeles an art capital, had relocated to New York. Most certainly, the presence of these practitioners on the East Coast affected the city's expanding discourse in the 1980s and beyond in terms of visual and cultural diversity. However, it was their experience in Los Angeles that first contextualized their work in the global continuum, the space their diasporic turn ultimately led. Place in the work of these artists considered here and the spatial formations used to elucidate it signal desires both to think about the future and to reconsider and reframe the past. In effect, these two positions become interchangeable, as Elizabeth Gross suggests in a, quote, reciprocal interaction between the virtual and the real, an undecidable reversibility, as if the image could take the place of an object and force the object behind the constraints of the merest plane. The real is converted into a different order, transformed through the concept of the virtual, iterations of an endless openness or future. Space is real and imagined, as discursive offers this spectrum of positions. A respatialization of the black geographic across the past, present, and future in spaces that are psychic and imaginary as well as real. Art represents new creative and life forms that assert new geographic formulations and new spatial and global demands. Thank you. Big show in um, London 
Um, David Hammonds is, of course, the most well-known African-American artist. Uh, makes the most money. <laughs> uh, many African-American artists living or dead, probably. Um, and good for him because he's still living. No, Basque makes more money than him. But he's, uh, you know, allowed to see his uh, star shine. And Aaron Hassinger has an exhibition that just opened and will be traveling. Um, it's opened at Spelman College in Atlanta. So she's just had a big retrospect. So a lot of people are catching on to these people. The one on the right, that's like a Japanese screen you know, that you see very often. But the context, is that like a break in the middle? Or, it or is, a screen to hold? It, it's not a screen, it's a scroll. It's it has on the wall. Scroll. Thank you. In the middle here is actually a, um, a textured area made from African-American hair or from black hair. And it's called Afro-Asian Eclipse because he's thinking about uh, Japanese scroll, maybe even Tibetan scrolls, tankas as they're called. But um, there is, for some of you who may know Judge Ellington, he has a song called Afro-Eurasian Eclipse. And so I think that David Hammond's all, he's inspired by music a lot and uh, you can listen to that. <laughs> um, so that's also where he got it from. Yes. Could you speak a little bit about the uh, exhibition, now I dig this, and your role in participation, and how that fits in the context of what you were addressing okay, today? Sure, thank you. Yes, now I dig this was an exhibition that I curated for the Hammer Museum at UCLA. Uh, it opened in 2011. It was part of Pacific Standard Time, which was a big, um, bunch of exhibitions, a large program of uh, 60 to 70 exhibitions that the Getty uh, Research Institute funded to um, basically explore the art of Southern California. They're doing a new one, I think in 17, called LA, LA, which is about the relationship of LA to Latin America. Um, this piece was actually in my show, Now Did This. Uh, it focused on, uh, it was called Now Did This, um, Art in Black Los Angeles, 1960 to 1980. So it focused on a number of African American artists uh, in that area, um, in that area, in that era, including Sandy Moody, Marin Hassinger, David Hammonds, Charles White. Most of the people actually that I just talked about were in the show. Um, also in the show, though, were other artists, white artists, Latino artists, Asian artists, and uh, that was. Uh, funny because, well, you know, I used the term black, so people thought the show was just going to be black artists, but I talked about black Los Angeles, and it was really about how African American artists and culture had influenced uh, the city of Los Angeles uh, and the world. So uh, we had people, uh, and I was really intent on creating a, or beginning a dialogue about a kind of broader history of Los Angeles. So for instance, there's an artist in the show, uh, African-American artist Daniel LaRue Johnson, and uh, he's an African-American artist. His wife, however, is Chicana, uh, Virginia Jaramillo. So, you know, I didn't want, you know, I want to stop the idea of, okay, we can only talk about him in this, but even though they've been married for 50 years, I can't talk about her, even though that they've been artists working together for all this time. Um, but part of the controversy came in that I continued to use the word black and it made some people who weren't black seem to be black, so that seemed to be <laughs> <laughs> It was fun. I had a lot of fun with that. And of course, my lovely family was there to experience it, including my Anna Lace. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, part of uh, about the show. And you, uh, yes? Um, yeah, um, thank you for the talk. It was really enjoyable. Um, I'm just curious if you've uh, done any research linking the assemblage pieces, uh, uh, specifically like the one in the backyard, to altars? Mm -hmm. uh, you mean the, um, the vernacular artists like this? Yeah, not the, the slide before <laughs> this. Yes. Before. Oh, where they're right. sitting in the back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not really working on these people per se, but if you read uh, the book uh, by Gray Gundifer, Judith McWillie, um, I'm going to forget the title of the book, but they do talk about that. 
Um, it's a fascinating book because they isolate different aspects of the landscape, wheels, water, different things. Um, they are, they include ideas of spirituality, but I think most of the people who would create this would call themselves Christians. So they wouldn't see this as an altar, right? They would say, no, we're going to church. We're going to talk to Jesus and God and everybody in church. But they do something that also has spiritual ideas here. So in this case, but then, you know, there's a whole other tradition of, uh, you know, if you want to think about, there's also Chicano altars, which are more about a kind of more traditional Christian spirituality that are home altars. They're not so much outside, although some other research and somebody else who knows that more will know a little bit more about that. But, but the home yard includes all this idea of spirituality, power. Um, it's really a fascinating um, area, and there are a number of books on that. Take one more question. Yeah, go ahead, Susan. Oh, I was wondering, are you working, what are you working on now? Are you doing another show, or, I know you're just not so far. Are you Yes. Uh, no shows. No shows. <laughs> <laughs> not on books. That's what I've been saying right now. I'll never do a show, and then I show up in the middle. Um, but I'm just trying to finish uh, a couple of books, projects. This talk is actually from a book that's coming out soon about California. I was working on the book when, um, I was in Los Angeles doing some research, and uh, a friend of mine who's a curator, uh, then at the Hammer, chief curator, uh, saw me and says, oh, what are you working on? And I said, oh, I'm working on a book on African-American artists in Los Angeles in the 60s and 70s. And I said, oh, are you going to turn that into a show? He said, oh, I'm the first book first. <laughs> and he called me up two weeks later and he says, oh, is your book finished? Because I have this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, it was a great opportunity to work with Getty to bring a lot more resources to my project and to give them to the artist too. Uh, so I did it, and uh, so that book still uh, is coming out, uh, which is on California. But the project that I'm working on here at the Great Archives at Green Library uh, is a book on conceptual art um, in Mexico. Well, among Mexican artists and among African American artists, and some of them are in different places. Some of the Mexican artists go to London. Um, but it's 